Hello everybody and welcome to my 1.6.4 Thermal Expansion Mod Spotlight. Thermal Expansion has changed quite a lot recently. Um, you've seen us play with it a lot on the FTB Unleashed and Ultimate servers. But now, um, instead of being a sort of add-on or expansion to Buildcraft, it's sort of its own mod now. It's had a lot of updates. You can see if uh, we type in at mod dot thermal expansion, you can see there's a whole load of stuff that we need to get into. And um, basically, uh, thermal expansion has basically been updated so that it doesn't need Buildcraft anymore. It has its own source of power. Um, it has its own way of storing its energy and using it, its own like en uh, energy uh, producers called dynamos, loads of other stuff which I'm about to get into right now. So I'm going to get myself a crescent hammer and we're going to get on with our mod spotlight for Buildcraft. So to get started with thermal expansion you're definitely going to need yourself a wrench or for thermal expansion on its own a crescent hammer which just requires a little bit of iron and a silver ingot so pretty easy. Crescent hammer, bam. And this is your sort of wrench um, from Buildcraft. It can act as like a wrench from Buildcraft, um, but it's just for just better basically. It's just a better type of wrench that has more uses. Um, this can be updated, upgraded even, um, into an Invar battle wrench, which does damage um, using Invar later, but we haven't got Invar yet. So I'll show you how to make Invar and stuff like that um, in a minute. So basically, with an expansion, there are three types of ores that are produced in the world. So you need those three types of ores. Um, I think that's it. Uh, there's also copper and tin, but I don't think it's showing here. Um, but yeah, basically you have uh, you have silver ore, you have lead, you have ferrous, and you have copper and tin. But copper and tin normally um, generates in other mods. So here you go. You've got silver, which gives you um, silver ingots, lead ore, which gives you lead ingots, and ferrous ore, which gives you lead or nickel ingots, um, depending on what mod you're using. So if you just smelt it, you get ferrous ingots, but sometimes you'll get a bit of shiny if you pulverize it, and from like the smeltery and things, you'll get nickel. Um, so you can see that it's actually in the ore dictionary, it's called nickel and stuff like that. So basically, um, yeah, those are the five different types of ores that you can get in Thermal Expansion, and they're used for all the machines that you make in this, uh, in this mod. So the first machines that you pretty well want to get is a redstone furnace crafted with a machine frame which is a staple sort of machine block from Thermal Expansion which requires gold, glass and iron and you're also going to need a redstone reception core which is gold and redstone so not too bad so get yourself a redstone furnace and a pulverizer so there you go those two machines and if we just place them down the world we'll see that there's a few things here, it's got a nice um, texture to it, and there's also these sort of blue, yellow, and sort of red squares, these cubes on the top. And I'll show you what those do right now. If we look at the top here, the mod called Whaler, what am I looking at? It's showing that um, it's got 0 out of 24,000 RF and 0 out of 40,000 RF. RF stands for Redstone Flux, that's the new sort of energy in thermal expansion. And we'll get into producing that RF now because, of course, these machines are going to need power to run. So you can see here there's these three tabs, the energy, the power usage, maximum power usage, and energy stored. This is internal buffer here. The um, redstone configuration, you can just tell it to ignore redstone, make it so that it runs without a redstone signal and closes with a redstone signal, and make it so that um, you ha has to have a redstone signal to run. So for now I'm just going to set them both disabled so that redstone doesn't mess with it too much. Then we've got the configuration tab. This tab basically allows you to set the output and input sides for the machines. So you can see here that right now the uh, input slots are the blue ones and they are the all the sides except for the right hand side. So if we pick up the right hand side here you'll see that the right hand side shows that there is a output slot there. So it basically um, creates in-game in -game, you know, pictures on the sides of the block showing you uh, what sides are inputting and outputting. The pulverizer is a little bit more confusing. You'll see that there's a red slot and a yellow slot. The yellow slot and the red slot are two different output slots, but you can also make it orange so that um, you know outputs both of them. So I'm going to turn. You can also turn off um, output and input on a side altogether, so you can see there it's not going to interact with that side at all. So yeah, you can basically completely change where all your inputs and outputs are. But for the purpose of this mod spotlight, I'm going to simply keep it so that the pulverizer, okay, has an input to the top and an output to the side. I'm going to turn the other sides off. So it's input is in the top and output to the side. And if we make this side of the redstone furnace an, out, an input, and we say make, I don't know, this side the output, you'll see that because this is outputting all the pulverized stuff from ores, like dusts and things, 
it will output all of the dust right into the input of the redstone furnace so that it automatically smelts. And then we can have a chest on the other side over here to sort of pick up all of the stuff. So if we go and get our chest quickly. There we go. Now, one thing you want to know about thermal expansion machines, they'll automatically output things, but things will not be automatically inputted. So you're going to need something like a hopper um, to help you do this. Let's get a hopper right here, up on the top, and then of course, like in vanilla Minecraft, you can put a chest on top of the hopper to allow things to just flow straight through into the, into the pulverizer. So let's get ourselves a few ores to test this out. Let's just get a bit of gold, one piece of gold. Let's put it into the chest up there, or fall into the hopper and then it will subsequently fall into the pulverizer and there we go. Normally it would start pulverizing at this point, but we don't have any power, so we need to generate some power. So we need to go back to at thermal expansion and see what types of power usage we can get. So you can see here guys that there are three types of power. There is steam power, magmatic power and compression power. Um, we're going to start with steam and basically steam power, what it does is you place it down in the world, you just place the dynamo down in the world like that We'll just get two of them and you'll see that their output if we hold shift over them it requires it generates energy redstone flux requires water and solid fuel so coal basically and that is going to make some power for us and you can see the maximum power here is 40 rf per tick and these machines use both 20 rf per tick and 40 rf per tick so if we just have one redstone dynamo we're not going to be able to fuel them because we're 20 redstone flux short so we're going to need two to completely power the system Right, so now what we want to do is we want to get ourselves something called an aqueous accumulator. Aqueous accumulator are not too bad to make. They need a pneumatic servo though, which is a bit of redstone and iron, which is not too bad, and that machine frame. And they basically are an automatic way in thermal expansion to get water. Really cool. So we just place this somewhere behind the machines like that. So you can see here that it's already collecting water automatically, but extremely slowly. So we definitely want to speed that up. The way we're going to speed that up is you just place two water sources next to each other, just like in vanilla Minecraft, where two water sources create a new water source. Exactly happens with the aqueous accumulator. You can see it's filling up a lot quicker now. But now we need a way to transport this water to these two dynamos. And the way we're going to do that is to get some fluid ducts. Now there's two types of fluid ducts, in fact there's two types of pipe in pretty much all of the thermal expansion stuff, except for power, which is a little bit different. You can see there's a normal fluid ducts, but that's going to require some hardened glass, which we haven't got to yet. But we can make some normal fluid ducts, some fluid duct opaque, which requires a bit of lead and copper, so let's get some of those. These are actually better for servers, because they don't like render the liquid, but never mind. So there we go. Now right now, we're not actually... Um, seeing the water but that's of course because it's opaque but it's definitely transporting through the pipes into the steam dynamos as you can see so there they are you can see the steam dynamos are filling up with water so we don't have to do it manually ourselves then we're going to need a way to transport the power from the uh, dynamos to the machines so for that we're going to need to get some I can't remember what they're called in this so let's just look for them ourselves I think they're called leadstone energy conduits yes here they are so there's a uh, lot of different types of energy conduits. There's the leadstone ones, which are the most basic, and you can see that they only transport 80 redstone flux per tick, but that's fine because we're only producing 80 redstone flux per tick, so that's, that's fine for now. But if we were to use more uh, machines and more of these steam dynamos, we'd have a bit of a problem. Then we've got the hardened energy conduits, uh, and the recipe for those are invar around um, the leadstone energy conduits and a bit of redstone, and those can tr uh, transfer 400 RF per tick and then finally we've got the redstone energy conduits which can transfer 10,000 energy per tick but you're going to need some destabilized redstone some liquid redstone for that so we'll get to that a bit later for now we'll just use the basic leadstone energy conduits and we'll place them down like this okay so you can see here that the um, dynamos are not actually attached to the conduits yet so we're going to pull out our crescent hammer and just right click to change their um, alter it, uh, to change their their siding, but because we're producing a little bit more power than we need, and we're also going to run out of coal at some points, we definitely need a way to store some uh, uh, internal storage, a bit more internal storage. So we're going to need some sort of battery to keep a little bit of power for when we run out of coal. And for that, there are lots of choices. There is a creative energy cell which is just going to charge infinite stuff, um, but then there's the actual ones from the game. Again, there's leadstone, hardened, and the redstone one. And there's also a resonant ender um, 
one as well, which is just completely ridiculous, just stores two, just ridiculous amounts of stuff. But for now we're just going to get the leadstone one, which uh, stores 400,000 RF, that's still a reasonable amount of RF, just, it's, the only problem is that it only receives and sends 80 resident flux per tick, so of course if you've got a more advanced system you won't be able to use these. But let's just place this down, you'll see here that there are some blue edges to each of the sides, but if we go into the configuration, we'll first see the internal buffer there, and we're going to disable the redstone, and then the configuration you can see again there's this thing with the sides. So of course we can change this, so the blue is input, orange is output, and yellow is don't connect to anything at all. So we can demonstrate this by going to yellow here, and you'll see that it's not connecting anymore because yellow means don't connect. So we want this side to be input, and then we want the other side to be the output where it puts all the power. There we go. So we've got input and output of energy through this uh, leadstone energy cell. So now what we need to do is add some coal. Pretty simple. Let's get a bit of coal and add them to these machines. And you can see instantly they light up and start uh, putting energy through this whole system and you can see these internal buffers are starting to fill up now. So once we get to a certain threshold this gold will start pulverizing very very slowly but it will definitely pulverize. And once it's pulverized it will go through the system and get smelted. Of course because we're creating dusts it means that we're going to get double the amount of ingots. So you can double your gold, you can double your iron and there you go you can see we got from one gold ore we got two gold ingots. We pretty much didn't have to do anything, we just put it in a chest, put some coal in there, and of course you can automatically um, put the coal into these um, dynamos, so that's no problem. So you can see now that these internal buffers have filled up, and the machines are not running, that the uh, lead energy conduit is quickly filling up. You can see on the side here there's like a sort of indicator of how, how much energy there is, and you can also um, just look at it with Whaler and it tells you how much energy there is in there. So it's a really good mod Whaler, just to kind of show you what's going on. So you can see both of these are full, and this is just charging up, and that's the great thing about this. Now once the leadstone energy, conduit, uh, leadstone energy cell is fill up, um, then these steam dynamos will actually start to slow down. They'll actually stop using their coal quite as much, they'll slow down and be a bit more, well not efficient, but they'll be a lot slower and therefore the coal won't be wasted, because of course if the power's going nowhere, then what's the point of them running? They won't completely stop, but they'll just be a little bit more clever about how they use their power. So that's a really basic setup that you can do with thermal expansion very early on in the game, just to double your ores. Very, very simple, but quite effective. So now let's move on to the more advanced stuff. We're going to need, of course, some more uh, steam dynamos, because we're going to need more machines and more energy, and therefore we're going to have to get rid of this whole leadstone system altogether. So let's get rid of it all, because it's rubbish. So we're going to need some hardened energy stuff. So let's have a look. We're going to need to go into hardened energy conduits, and we're going to need to put those down. Here we go. And we're also going to need our hardened energy cell. There we are. Let's just set the output for this. There we go. Got it. So now we've got power flowing through the system again, but we've got a better red energy cell, and we've also got these hardened um, energy stuff. But let's not use any more steam dynamos, because those are a bit boring. Let's instead use some magmatic dynamos. These are a little bit easier to use in terms of, basically, um, you don't need this aqueous accumulator and stuff, but it's also a little bit more difficult to get their type of fuel. You're going to need some lava for this. Now, you're not going to need the aqueous accumulator, but you're still going to need to pump in your own... Um, liquid, you're going to pump in your own source of lava. So for that we're going to need to get ourselves a tank. And a great th way to do this is to get yourself a portable tank, go to the lava and fill it up. Now a portable tank, pretty easy to make, um, but it's basically a tank from Buildcraft that you can actually carry around with you. So you can basically go to the nether, collect a load of uh, lava and then just run back with your portable tank and fill up your engines, get a bit more power. Really really good way and there's of course loads and loads of um, steps to this, all the way up to a 64 bucket worth um, uh, resonant tank. But for now I'm just going to use the creative spawned um, portable tank, just so that we have an infinite source of lava, just for demonstration purposes. So let's actually get ourselves a bit of lava. For a bucket. So there we go, you can see we've got infinite lava in there now. Very good for uh, testing out the setups like I'm doing right now. 